I sort of worked myself up almost into a controlled rage and I thought, fuck you, whatever, whatever demons are inside in the dark waiting to get me, here I am, come at me, I'm here now. Hi guys, how's it going? If we've not met before, I'm Paul. I'm a former personal trainer and nutritionist. Currently, I'm a YouTuber in the vegan health and fitness space. And occasionally I experiment with psychedelic uh, plant medicines for the purpose of emotional and spiritual expansion. So a quick disclaimer, this type of medicine is not for everyone. It's not without its risks. However, a lot of these risks are really overstated. It's propaganda, decades old propaganda from the US government and you know, very prestigious institutions, Johns Hopkins, NYU, UCLA, um, Imperial College in London. You know, they're all studying these medicines and seeing great results in terms of treating PTSD, past trauma, addictions. They're very, very powerful. They deserve respect, but not just in terms of being careful of using, but also that they are not, you can be used as like a party drug. Some of them, I don't recommend that, but they are very powerful medicine also. Of course, many of these things are still illegal in many different countries, mine included. So this is not me endorsing or encouraging their use. This is just my experience for educational uh, and entertainment reasons only. So to date, I did a one gram psilocybin um, trip. I did three grams. Now these are low and moderate kind of levels where you get some visual um, hallucinations, eyes open ones. Um, and you can get great insight, but it's not, what I, I'm really after is, it's called like a, a heroic dose. Um, and this time I did six grams, uh, typically five grams and up is considered this heroic dose and it can involve kind of ego dissolution. You can lose a sense of, of who you are. You kind of get this feeling of oneness. Supposedly you can meet seemingly intelligent entities and they want to communicate with you. There would be strong closed eyes hallucinations, auditory hallucinations. Some people say that they can like kind of blast around the universe and experience kind of all the things. So the reason that I've been on this journey is for trying to gain confidence for public speaking, broadcast, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been doing a lot of this stuff already, but historically I was extremely phobic and I just want to get completely comfortable with everything. Also, my partner Gemma pointed out that in recent months, certainly the last couple of years, I, I kind of have a constant need to either be creating content or being entertained. And it's even crept over into like through the night, I will have headphones, you know, be listening to podcasts and things. I think that started maybe a couple of years back, you know, in general, very self-confident, very self-assured, very happy in life. But I would sometimes wake up in the nighttime and just have a feeling of kind of anxiety. In more recent months, we're looking to, to start a new business next year, which would involve a real big step up in terms of being on stage, live audience, live broadcast, um, you know, on a much larger platform. And I want that to do well. So of course, like there's a bit of trepidation around that. And that, that was really bothering me in the night. I've kind of, um, got a long way with that now and it's not so much of a thing but I just I just wondered and Gemma wondered are there some inner demons there that I'm trying to avoid to not face and maybe this is all ties into the, the confidence thing as well so yeah kind of twin uh, reasons for the mushrooms boost my confidence in general and just see are there any demons there you know that are making it so that I need to be constantly entertained or whatever and that's something that I'm kind of hiding from and I, and I wanted to face them. Unfortunately, <laughs> my partner Gemma a little while back did another plant medicine called ayahuasca and she had a really horrible time of it. Uh, she got stuck in this kind of repetitive loop, which is one thing that can happen. It's, it's known as looping. And sadly at the time she was going through the worst sort of emotional pain inside this trip. And so she was stuck in this loop, which she felt was for eternity. She felt like she couldn't even die to escape that because consciousness carries on. 
and it left it traumatized. I would just imagine it, it gave her some PTSD and, you know, she was ter ter terribly traumatized initially uh, and things would trigger her like sounds which would remind her of, of stuff she heard in the experience and, and it was like she was back in again and she'd be kind of panicking. Over time that's lessened and, and it's quite rare now and the stupid thing is supposedly the worst time you worst of the time you have it in the experience actually that's where the most growth is because you're facing past trauma it's coming to the surface and you can then deal with it and it, you know it can take a while after the fact potentially there's this phrase like what you resist persists and so a lot of emotional healing is about facing these things head on of course seeing your loved one suffering like that doesn't feel good and I, like I said I, I've done uh, a one and a three gram like a, a very mild and a moderate psilocybin um, experience and it, it was nothing but fun like it was very um, joy inducing there was a feeling of bliss I was laughing a lot there was just mild visual hallucinations with the eyes open but nothing that I felt could hurt you not saying that it can't but I just thought oh, maybe this would be good for Gemma but of course seeing what she'd gone through with the ayahuasca, I was scared to do this hero's dose and I thought or heroic dose and I thought if I'm advocating to her you know, oh, I wonder if you should just try that. Like, how can I say that when she's been through this terrifying thing? I haven't been through that terrifying thing, yet I'm scared to face potentially what she went through. So eventually I just thought, Fuck it, I need to get on with this, you know, if nothing else for her sake. So that was the catalyst and I thought, right, I'm doing it. I got five grams of, grams of mushrooms, which is quite a big pile. I thought, how am I ever going to get this? down me and I ground it up really fine with a coffee grinder, put bits of it in my mouth at a time, chewing, chewing, swallowing back with a bit of water and it, and it actually started kicking in within 20 minutes which is the, the shortest onset time you can really have. I thought wow this is going to be a powerful experience. My initial plan was to get into bed um, in the dark, I put a blindfold on, earplugs in, go inwards and face whatever demons there are. So that's what I did. Now, I don't think I've got terrible past trauma. I don't think I've got horrible demons inside, but I don't know. Like, you know, there's a lot of horrible things happen in childhood that sets up trauma that, you know, informs you into adulthood. Uh, and some real horrible trauma, your brain will hide from you. You won't know it's there. Um, and again, seeing what Gemma went through, because of all these things, I had fear. And I'm laying there waiting for these visuals to come on, waiting for like whatever evil, you know, is going to be conjured up. And I thought, and, and it took a little while. And, and eventually, I sort of worked myself up almost into a controlled rage. And I thought, fuck you, whatever, whatever demons are inside in the dark waiting to get me, here I am come at me I'm here now and I like willed them to come I thought I'm just gonna face him what you resist for persists like just face him head on get it done sadly that dose this six grams I you know uh, normally a hero's dose is five grams I thought I'm a bit bigger than your average bear I took six it wasn't quite enough for me and I didn't get the strong closed eyes visuals, which was a bit disappointing. I, there was little hints of things, objects and shapes trying to kind of form, more like a, a daydream really. And so I'm willing whatever to come, I'm saying, F you, come on, here I am. And uh, nothing quite formed. And, and then I remembered, there's this saying, um, all there is is love, everything else is illusion. This is what a lot of people agree with who've done a lot of these plant medicines and that's been their experience. And I, and I thought to myself, if anything does come, like I'm in this egoic, like aggressive state trying to like egg it on. But then I thought, if it comes, I'm, I'm just gonna give it love. <laughs> I'm not gonna show it any fear. I'm gonna embrace it. I'm gonna put my arms around it and I'm gonna give it love. And then I just started laughing to myself, really laughing. And I thought, nothing can hurt me. Nothing can hurt me. And in that moment, I felt unstoppable. I felt indestructible. And that was really beautiful. So, you know, the fact that it wasn't a heroic dose, I didn't see these terrible demons. You know, that was a bit of a disappointment. But the fact that I ran in there into the darkness, head on of my own volition, 
you know, I went with the intention of gaining confidence and I did. I thought, wow, if I can do that, I can face anything like, you know. So I, I did get a lot out of the experience despite it not being quite what I'd hoped for. What happened next? I saw, I had a visitation from someone from my past. There was this guy and, and I, you know, he was a content creator and I was a big fan of his. He seemed to be doing a lot of good in the world. And he was living, in, you know, in another town, but he was saying that he was going through hard times and everyone's horrible to him. And so Jem and myself put him up and we were so nice to him, but it turned out we later worked out that he's a covert narcissist and he turned out to be the most horrible person I've ever met. He was really out of order to Gemma, um, to a lot of our friends. He was kind of trying to cause divisions. He tried to drive a wedge between me and Jem and he was really out of order to Jem and, and really disrespectful to her. And, you know, I come from a very violent background. It was something that I was trying to put behind me at the time and I since have put behind me. But I just knew if I confronted him, I had a real problem with uh, disrespect. People being disrespectful towards me was a real trigger for me, particularly if I'd gone out of my way to be nice to them and then they threw it in my face. And I knew if I confronted him and he said he gave me a bit of lip back or just said the wrong thing, I knew that I would most likely hurt him and that was something I didn't want. So I did the sensible thing and just tried to forget it, put it to the side, just have nothing to do with the man anymore. But obviously, I mean, this was years ago, obviously that was still festering somewhere in my psyche. And there he was in, you know, in a kind of vision turned up. And in my mind's eye, I was compelled to say to him, did I do something to hurt you? And I just saw him like look away, he had nothing to say. And, you know, because he couldn't, because he knew I was in the right, he knew like he was terribly wronged us. And then it was just like, I went, and I was done with that. So perhaps, perhaps I healed something there, potentially. Um, a bit more imagery. I saw animal suffering. It was like the bottom, it was like I was looking at the bottom of a glass jar and cats and dogs were being kind of squashed into there. And I was seeing their faces getting pressed up against the glass and, and they were being like injured and squashed. And you know, it's quite horrific. And immediately my, my initial, uh, instinct was to look away and then I thought no you just face everything and I looked directly at it and it just dissolved it was like nothing the minute I confronted anything it was obliterated and it just felt like nothing could hurt me and again it just really boosted my confidence the, the last bit of imagery and you know, this might sound <laughs> quite a lot, but this was over the course of 45 minutes. So it was very sparse. It really wasn't the experience I'd signed up for. But the last little bit of a hint of imagery that I saw was sex or sexual imagery. And it morphed into images of death. And not only was there this sort of mild, almost hallucinatory, it wasn't, again, it's kind of more like a daydream, but a bit more than a daydream, but nothing really tangible. I mean, not, nothing that solid, if you know what I mean. And there was also an auditory hallucination going on. Again, very mild, very quiet, but there was like this sort of noise and the noise was morphing and morphing and it became words. It was on a kind of loop. It's like it was corrupted and it was becoming more and more uncorrupted. And it was two words. It was something like death festival or death, death something. And um, sounds a bit daft, I know. But it, it's just struck me odd that, you know, what created that? Like, if it's my brain creating it, why didn't I know what it was going to turn out to be? And I just thought, like, is this our brain? Like, when we're tripping, when we're having this, this experience, you know, is it our brain creating it? Is it, it's, or some of it, information from source, if you believe in such things? I've got no clue. I've got no skin in the game. I'm just interested to find out. But that just struck me odd that that, that can be a thing. Uh, then... Like I said, this was 45 minutes, not much had happened. You know, I was hoping for this real breakthrough, but it was obvious to me that 
you know, wasn't getting quite what I wanted. So I thought, I'll, I'll get up now. And uh, walking around, like, there was quite strong hallucinations going on. Nothing sort of appeared that wasn't there. But things were sort of uh, different. I came into the living room here, which half my living room is a YouTube studio. And I sat on the sofa down at the far end there looking this way. And the wires were so obvious to me. So I've got four lights, I've got these two monitors, computer, three cameras, you know, modem, sound interface, audio interface. And the, just the wires, it's so, it looks like millions of wires, red and black wires, and they're pulsating and the different ones at different times are coming in and out of focus. They're sort of, colors are sort of pulsating. Uh, and I just saw, like, it looks like a TV studio. And I thought, wow, if I'm really that terrified of, um, of being broadcast, it doesn't seem that way because I've set up my whole life around it. My living room is, is dedicated to it. Like, from the minute I get up to the minute I go to bed, I can be, you know, producing content to, to share around the world. And, and that was another confidence builder. I just thought, oh, I'm already doing it. Like, what, what have I really got to fear? Like, I've built my life around it. I can't be that terrified. And then again, that was, um, that was confidence building. Uh, then, by this point, I'd become much more coherent. I could sort of speak, um, you know, quite normally. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I settled down with my partner, Gemma, and, and we were having some lovely chats, really in-depth. The, the mushrooms really made it so I could connect much deeper. And, and of course, it, all your feelings are heightened. So I just felt this really intense love towards her like an incredible, unbelievable attraction to her and an overwhelming feeling of wanting to protect her. I remember like I asked her, like, am I meeting all of your needs in our relationship? Like, is there anything I can do better, anything I'm not doing? And I was sort of holding her and I thought I was just squeezing her so tight. At one point she said, oh, you said something like, oh, you're squeezing me a bit hard. I think she was kind of half joking, but I just felt so protective over her and just, we just had a wonderful connection and that, that was really, really good. I was much more observant. Um, I saw how Gemma is quite kyphotic, you know, that classic C shape, sort of a bit of the tech neck thing going on where, you know, most humans in this modern world by, th you know, age 30 and above, you know, we've got a, at least a degree of that going on. It, it became super apparent to me and uh, I could see where she needed massaging and stretching and I really felt like I wanted to kind of put her straight. And uh, in my own body, you know, I've done years of heavy lifting, like martial arts back in the day, fighting as a doorman, you know, I've got a lot of pain and dysfunction and, and trigger points, you know, like uh, with a uh, muscle, bundles are constricted by the, the fascia and that it kind of needs dissipate, needs massage and, and pressure to, to help release. And I just felt these points in my body, they were all kind of pulsating and showing me where they were and it, it made me want to sort of work them out. And um, yeah, it just felt super observant of both mine and Gemma's body. So that was interesting. So all in all, looking back over the experience, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was amazing. I got a lot of growth from it. However, it wasn't what I'd signed up for. It wasn't the, the hero's journey. It wasn't a heroic dose. I guess just because I am that much bigger than your average bear. So the annoying thing is, you know, this experience cost 65 pounds. And it's very apparent to me that I need to go higher still you know how much how many grams do i need to do i don't know but it's getting really expensive and that's a bit annoying but what, I, what i've been doing i've been uh, researching a lot of people use lsd for the same reason as uh, the psilocybin and actually a lot of people say it's easier to dose as well because you don't get like the natural variability that you do with, with the mushroom and of course the fact that it is natural Drew me to do the mushrooms first. Of course, LSD is man-made. But if you have a look at a list of the toxicity of pharmacological substances, you'll see that the hallucinogens like uh, D3, 
DMT, mushrooms, LSD, etc. They're right down the bottom. They're virtually just they're not really toxic at all. And then you've got, you know, your, your sort of hard drugs, um, alcohol, tobacco, prescription medicine. Some of those are near the top as the most toxic things you can put into your body. So... Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to do a bit more, more research and likely try LSD instead. It's, it will be a fraction of the price. Um, and as I say, it should be easier to, to dose. And um, hopefully I'll get the, uh, the experience that I'm really looking for. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you're interested to find out about microdosing or my first uh, mushroom experience, Check out these. Hope to see you around, guys. <laughs> Have an awesome day.